Well, good evening and welcome to a special edition of Tucker Carlson tonight, the Campus Craziness Edition. As a country, we invest a tremendous amount of money and power in our higher education system. We count on our universities to train future leaders who will, we hope, preserve the freedoms that built and sustained our country over hundreds of years. But is that happening? How well are those freedoms being preserved on campuses? That's the subject of tonight's show, a special hour-long edition of Campus Craziness. Now, no campus represents the shift more vividly than UC Berkeley. In the 60s, Berkeley was the heart of the free speech movement. Now things are very different. Troy Warden is a student at Berkeley and also works as a correspondent for campus reform. We talked to him recently about the current intellectual climate at his school. So you went and spoke directly to the so-called anti-fascists. What did they say when you talked to them? Well, Tucker, thank you for having me on. And I just want to, to let my story be known. I went to this meeting because I wanted to have these anti-fascists own up to the violence they have perpetrated and permitted against our club. And I, quite frankly, called them out. I asked them to simply condemn the violence that's been perpetrated against the Berkeley College Republicans. Uh, and their response was, quite frankly, very disappointing. They failed to even acknowledge that it occurred. The person, the leader, of refused fascism, Samsara Taylor, uh, said that she didn't even know of the occurrences. And this is completely unacceptable because I've gone on the media multiple times. She's been on this program before. Um, and I've written about this in, on campusreform.org multiple times. We've had members punched in the face. We've had members spat at, pepper sprayed. I was almost beaten up during uh, the February 1st Milo Yiannopoulos riots. And she refused to acknowledge them and actually said not all violence is equal. She, she suggested to her supporters that in some cases violence is completely acceptable right. if someone disagrees with you. And she said the same thing uh, on this show pretty clearly. Do you get any sense that they're calling themselves anti-fascists ironically? Here you have people dressed in costume committing violence against people they, whose politics they disagree with and they're anti-fascists. I mean, are they serious when they say that? Well, Partly, but also partly not. You know, these groups are receiving funding from persons such as George Soros. Yeah. This, is, quite frankly, is exactly the kind of line that they are going to pull because it's going to get them a lot of funding from very liberal donors. So if they take a very strong stance against Mr. Trump and his supporters and they label them fascists and they go out onto the streets and commit political terrorism, physically intimidate and verbally intimidate uh, conservative students on campuses and, and other Trump supporters in the streets, then I think it's the best way for them to receive the, the amount of funding they want. It's grotesque that anyone would be funding political violence, but people are, as we've noted often uh, on this show. Now, what is Berkeley as an institution doing to protect you? They're all about safe spaces. Your space does not seem very safe to me. Well, that's the ironic thing. The Berkeley College Republicans have never and will never ask for a safe space. But many other groups have. Black Lives Matter, for instance, uh, blocked white students specifically from going to class in protest. Uh, they demanded that a whole list of demands, uh, including safe spaces. But the Berkeley College Republicans have simply asked the city of Berkeley, the uh, administrators of the University of California, Berkeley, and the UC Police Department to simply protect our rights to give us the proper amount of uh, personnel and security. And instead of doing that, they slap very large uh, security fees on us, usually over $5,000 for a, a conservative speaker. And then when rioters do show up, when violence is perpetrated, when threats of violence are made, they either have their uh, security and, and police and peace officers stand down, or in fact, they cancel our event even before we're able to put them on. So in all these cases, what you've seen is high profile and even low profi profile conservative speakers prevented from speaking on campus because the university is too cowardly to defend their mantle, the mantle they proudly um, proclaim every chance they get, which is the birthplace of the yeah. free speech movement. And like I, I wrote on, on the night of February 1st, I said the free speech movement is dead. The very birthplace of the free speech movement is also its grave. Wow. I don't have anything to add to that, other than how old are you? I am 21. I just turned 21. Man, I was nowhere near as articulate or as brave as you were when I was 21. I'm impressed. Trey, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker.